This essay is titled, With Me or Against Me. How is it that every single person sees right through my deepest insecurities? Well, the intelligent ones, at least. I'm usually pretty good at telling whether someone is intelligent or not. More or less intelligent than me, I guess, is kind of the scale I measure them on. Does this person see me as I truly am? Flawed, longing, imperfect. Oh, they do? Well, they, they don't want to be around me. Anyway, okay. I'll separate myself from them. Fine. Fine. What, they think they're better at this subset of skills? They think they're better than me? All right, cool. Well, I have self-confidence. I'll show them. I'll trust myself and show them. And it's the same on the other end. Of, oh, this person likes me. What, they can't see my flaws? My flaws that are so obvious, my insecurities that keep me up at night. Are they stupid? Nah, I can't surround myself with people that are stupid. I, I'm smart. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't work because I value being smart maybe more than I value being loved. What is love? I felt controlled, trapped, cornered by love a few times throughout my life, and all of a sudden I write it off. I write off the most beautiful thing humans have to offer because it might be imperfect. Someone else might size up to me, might actually be almost the same as me. No, they're not the same as me. No, they have less going on than me because I'm a harder worker. I'm superior. I, I make sacrifices. I'm disciplined. Or they have more important things going on than me because my audience just doesn't get it. They're less intelligent. Or, or does that person have a less intelligent base of people they're delivering their creation to? Yes. That's it. They're pandering to their audience, their inferior audience. Yeah, I could do that, but, but I have integrity and I'm smart. Ah, this warm blanket and this fireplace and this movie that I'm watching alone and the credits roll. Who can I share this with? Yeah, I can write about it. I can write about it and, you know, share that with the world. But whose face am I touching and eyes am I looking into when I tell them that I think the main character was actually depressed because of something they did in the first five minutes of the movie. You know, I can point at the screen all I want. I, I can rewind it to that moment, but it's just me, remember? Because the intelligence I have, no one else can match up to that. Look, you're either with me or you're against me. And either way, I'll sabotage this relationship. Why? Because, I don't know, I have no idea why. Is it because I think people will be indifferent to some of the aspects of me? In my worldview, I'm indifferent to nothing. Except everything I'm indifferent to. To which I put no focus on and harbor no ill will or care towards. Okay? So am I scared of that? Am I... Am I scared of something meaning so much to me? Sharing it with someone who truly do, does mean so much to me, but who I'm internally battling over the question of how much they mean to me? Should they mean this much to me? Should they mean less? What, what exists in reality and what have I made up about them? You know what? I, let me break this off because... I'm self-reliant. I'm not weak. I'm independent. I don't need them. I want them. That's probably worse. Because needing someone... Needing someone... 
assumes that you'll take them as they are, even in desperation. Whereas wanting someone, that's dangerous. Because a lot of the time, you only want parts of them or aspects of them, the ones you like and, and that which you don't love. Well, that could cause conflict. As if the conflict, as if the conflict that could arise from a human relationship is a bad thing, as if the conflict within yourself and other people in your short life thus far hasn't built what hasn't been what's built your character up and given it two legs to walk on, you fool. No one is like me. It's true and it is beautiful. But the prerequisite for someone loving you is not that they are like you. Look, you're clever. You're a great writer. Such a great writer that you write yourself off. You write yourself off so you can write yourself back into the narrative. It's very clever. I have to give it up to you. Bravo. But I'm telling you, it is at the cost of love, of real meaningful human relationships. That is the collateral in this delusional battlefield you ideate. In a battle that, sure, you might win by your measurements, but who celebrates with you? Who celebrates all of the release parties of your truth? It's not the person who went to that party, just like you, alone and was put off by the look in your eyes, the searching look for better conversations than the one you were having with them. They enjoyed the conversation until now where they felt like a temporary prong of a ladder for you to climb on. Who wants to be around someone who makes them feel like that? That person points at the TV and pauses it too. But maybe they have people who watch movies with them who do the same. And in that moment, when you saw the main character's depression, they saw the supporting character's individualistic, conceited worldview. That they couldn't tell the main character was depressed because they were caught up in their own tribulations. And their other friend on the other side of the couch, the one who first picked up a camera when he was four years old, complains about the slow push-in, about how ancient and dated it is. And their friend to the left argues that they're missing the point of the scene altogether. The entire point. How are they not seeing the subtle clues the director is leaving to what's going to unfold in the final act? And on the love seat to the right of those three sits the couple, one of which is replying to an email from the workday, even though it's 9 p.m. And their partner cracks their third tall boy open because it's 9 p.m. on a Friday and the emails can wait until Monday or God, even tomorrow. But this is their only form of rebellion that seems to affect her, so cheers. And they all watch the movie and they argue over what it meant. And there are hills that they'll die on and some that they'll secede on and laugh and think of how silly they were being seconds later. And after the movie, they'll all depart and say their goodbyes and some will stay too late and some will keep the conversation going for too long. Then they'll all be in their beds, and one of them, the host, will think about, even type out an apology. Sorry guys, I, I wasn't feeling myself today. Before deleting it all together, and, and another one will wonder if Andy understood their joke earlier, or if they thought he was serious. And this will continue, in different forms, in every bed, until everyone falls asleep, and wakes up the next day. And by then, their regrets and self-doubt will have faded because there's a new to-do list. But the love of those five friends circulating around that room will keep most of them going through the week until their next get-together. And I will see their Instagram story and wonder why I don't have friends to watch movies with. And through all of this, all that will have happened was that two TVs played the same movie on the same night. The universe, Mother Nature, she laid unaffected, uninterested, not with me, not against me, but indifferent. <laughs>